Grief Share is starting up again, not this Monday, but next Monday. We will start our series with that from 6.30 to 8 in the upper room, correct? In the upper room, um, if you take the elevator up to the second floor, it's the, the gathering space there. For our 6th, 7th, and 8th graders, a live is coming up very quickly. Uh, the deadline to register with us is next to Sunday, August 25th. So please, if you are planning on joining us for a live, please let us know. The Synod's deadline for registration is the first week of September, so we need to have your information so we can then register as a group. <coughs> Um, so please get back to us by the 25th. Um, we have Music Ministry Mix, Adult Ministry Mixer coming up, not this Thursday, but the following Thursday. Um, come join us. If you've never rung a handbell before, this is your opportunity to give it a try. Um, they're a lot of fun. Um, they're going to... Uh, let you ring the handbells, they're going to do some singing, there's going to be fellowship. I hear there's going to be food, food. Yes. and not just the goldfish y'all brought. <laughs> so come on out for, for a good time of fellowship and enjoying one another's company and learning more about the adult music ministry. My final announcement for this morning is to let you all know that Larry Blocker passed away this week. So we keep his family and friends in our thoughts and prayers. The service will be here tomorrow at 11 a.m. with a, uh, a short viewing beforehand. So the viewing will start at around 11 o'clock, uh, 10 o'clock, sorry. 10 o'clock for the viewing, 11 o'clock for the service, with a luncheon to follow. Um, the, the burial will be down in Snydersburg, and that will be private for just the family. So Pastor Faye and I will go down with them for the burial after the luncheon. There is also a, a viewing tonight at Kenworthy Funeral Home, starting at 6 o'clock. Um, um, so that is another opportunity to, uh, to spend time with the family and to say our goodbyes. Um, but in sure and certain hope of the resurrection, we entrust Larry to our loving and merciful creator. At this time, I invite you to rise as we continue with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which you live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. We continue with our opening hymn.
Whoever munches on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which our ancestors ate, and they died. The one who munches on this bread will live into eternity. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, you may be seated. My opening question may not come as a surprise based on my translation. However, what's your favorite thing to munch on? <laughs> Chips. Did I hear cashews? Oh, I love cashews. Pretzels. Pretzels. Pistachios. Pistachios. Oh, we have some good nut uh, lovers in this, in this group. In my family, we are big card players. Well, and I just love games, whether it's cardboard or video games, I just really enjoy them. As a family, we play four-handed pinochle, hand and foot, which is a variation on canasta, Shanghai Rummy, and other games that I'm pretty certain I only know by our family's name for the game. <coughs> For us, playing cards is something we do with our hands while we sit and chat. There is a bit of healthy competition. Sorry, Ma. But it is much more about the time that we spend together around the table. It is about creating and building relationship and enjoying one another, checking up on our lives, and just being family together. But there is a weird thing that happens when we play card games. I don't know if it's just an us thing or if it's a wider thing, but when we play cards, we all get the munchies. When the cards come out, often something salty and crunchy comes out with it, and we munch throughout the evening. Sometimes my brother and his wife will bring over crackers and cheeses. I usually prefer to pull out a bag of chips. And y'all, I am so thrilled to be back in the snack capital of the world. <laughs> because we do chips so much better here. Uts and Martins, whatever. The salty and flavorful crunch of a good potato chip just hits that satisfying spot as we're playing cards and letting the conversation fly. So we are on week four of five of the Bread of Life series. I promise we're getting close. And for me, this is one of the harder weeks for me to get my brain around. We're accustomed to language around communion, when we point to bread and say that this is Jesus' body for you, and then we point to bread to wine or grape juice and say this is Jesus' blood for you. For Lutherans, we don't believe that there is this moment in which the elements literally change from bread and wine to, to flesh and blood. We believe that the elements remain fundamentally the same. It is bread and it is wine. But we also believe that because Jesus tells us that it is his body and it is his blood, Jesus himself is in, with, and under the elements. We just don't try to explain how that happens. We just trust that because Jesus says, this is my body, that the bread is his body and it is for us. Today's reading, however, sounds a bit different. It is like Jesus is pointing to himself and saying, Guys, look! I am bread. Eat me. Eat this versus eat me. No wonder the Jew Judeans quarreled among themselves as Jesus was saying this. The translation on the back of the bulletin is fine, don't get me wrong, but it translates two different words as eat. 
What has been used throughout this whole Bread of Life series, and it is accurately translated as eat. There's nothing more exciting to that word. The other, however, I translated as munch. Some will translate it as feed on, or chew on, or even nibble on. It is a verb that is about eating, but it is more about the method of eating, right? It's of snacking, of savoring, of whatever language you want to put around that. The English word eat just doesn't get at that. Pastor Mark and I talked after the last service, um, so I know he disagrees with me on this. <laughs> But I am personally not convinced that Jesus is talking about communion here. And you can talk to Pastor Mark about the reasons he disagrees. Um, but for me, I, there is no institution of the Last Supper in John. And as I said this morning, I'm willing to be wrong on it. It's fine. But there doesn't seem to be a lot of focus on either of our sacraments as we understand them in the Gospel of John. And scholars are about 50-50 on whether or not today's text has to do with communion. So I'm on one side, Pastor Mark is on the other. And that's okay. This is one of those debates that has been going on for a long time. But it leads me to wonder, what do we do with this text amid this disagreement? Is there something about it beyond bread and wine? beyond communion, and I want to be clear, communion is absolutely incredibly important for us as Christians. I'm just not convinced that John is talking about it today. Is there something else that we can, dare I say it, chew on with this passage? I offer two possibilities. First, I think there's something going on here about the nature of Jesus and what Jesus does for us. And yes, absolutely, that can translate to communion, and we'll get to that in a second. Secondly, I think there's also something about what happens when we abide in, dwell in, or munch on that nature of Jesus. So the, for the nature of Jesus, I'm going to pop back to the beginning of the Gospel of John for a second. John opens his telling of the Jesus story like this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. And John continues the prologue like this. And the word of God became flesh. We get that word again. The word of God, the word became flesh and pitched a tent among us, and we have seen his glory the glory as a father's only son, full of grace and truth. And from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. Jesus is the word made flesh, and in the incarnation, Jesus, God puts on flesh and bones and fills the body with breath and blood, and Jesus dwells with us or pitches a tent among us. In the fullness of Jesus' humanity and divinity, side by side, we receive the good news. My seminary Hebrew Bible professor, the Reverend Dr. Ralph Klein, imagined God's inner dialogue about the incarnation like this. And before I say it, I'm going to warn you, you will probably hear this from me many times over the years. <laughs> it has been one of those things that has just stuck with me. In the incarnation, it is if God said to God's self, I'm God, I'm not human, but would it help if I became human? In other words, 
Would it help you trust that I am on your side if I become like you? Would, it trust, would you trust my yes to you and all humanity if I became like you? Would it help you to trust in my love and in my covenant if I lived, loved, walked the earth with its hills and valleys and died just like you? My beloved siblings, this is good news. This is gospel. What kind of God would do that? What kind of God would risk the lives that we live? What kind of God would would forsake immortality to put on mortality, the throne for the dust. The God made known in Jesus is so radically on our side that God is willing to risk making God's self in our image. We talk a lot about humanity being made in God's image, and here God says, what would happen if I made myself in your image? In, in your flesh. This is a God that is so willing to identify with us and be in relationship with us in all of the joys and sorrows and everything in between that our humanity brings. <clears throat> that God, God's self, puts on flesh and blood and experiences it too. And not only is Jesus willing to put on our flesh and fill up with our blood, Jesus gives that same flesh and blood up for the sake of you and me. Jesus gives up his life for you, for me, and the world that God so loves, and Jesus really and truly dies so that nothing can any longer, not even death, can separate us from the love of God found in Christ Jesus. In Jesus, we have a God that refuses to let God's people go, giving us everything for the sake of a relationship with us. We have a God that refuses to let sin and death have the final word. It is God's life that has the final word for all of us. And that final word frees us from all that threatens us, frees us from all the things that try to tell us that we're not worthy of God or God's love. It frees us from our own sin and brings us from death to life that lasts into eternity. Now we get to the second part. First part about the nature of Jesus. Second part, what happens when we munch on Jesus? So what happened? So what if today Jesus is calling us to munch on that gospel, that good news of who Jesus is for you and for me? To savor that Jesus is the Word of God made flesh, who lived and died for you. Maybe Jesus knows that, like a good potato chip, we crave that good news, and we cannot get enough of it. There's something here that only Jesus can satisfy. <coughs> Maybe Jesus knows that we need to hear it again and again and again until we can trust that the good news is for us and for all. Perhaps Jesus knows that we're forgetful and we need to hear again and again that through Jesus we receive grace upon grace, freely, completely. Maybe it is by munching on or feeding on that grace that we are assured of God's life and salvation that goes into eternity. And that's part of what we do around this table here. And maybe the building of relationship with Jesus and one another around a table, around a font, 
among each other and out in the community, helps us to abide in him like he abides in us. Because there, we find the life that is already and always ours. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand.
Uh, the two of us were tasked with creating curriculum, schedules, activities, and finding Bible stories for every day of that week. Uh, the theme that we came up with for that week was the way. We wanted the campers to leave the, at the end of the week having a better understanding of the way of God. We shared, we shared stories like the Good Samaritan, the Sermon on the Mount, and uh, the Disciples, just to name a few. Throughout the week, Ben had also taken the kids through an organ tour, which they seemed to really enjoy that. And also, we had Sue Covert come in one day, and she taught the campers about fossils and minerals, um, and even had them digging for their own fossils and breaking their own geodes. I enjoyed breaking the geodes myself. <laughs> uh, overall, that week was a very fun week and a great way to start the summer. Next in line was uh, I was in charge for games for VBS the following week. Being that the theme was scuba, we had played games such as Sharks and Minnows, Water Balloon Fights, and uh, Dolphin, Dolphin, Shark, or Duck, Duck, Goose. <laughs> Finally, I had gone with Tim and the youth to the Lutheran Hands Pre-Trip and National Gathering in New Orleans. For, for Lutheran Hands, we worked with the Coalition to Restore Coastal Carolina, or the CRCL. Uh, with them, we helped bag oysters in order to create reefs so they can reproduce and also serve as an extra barrier to help prevent flooding in the coast. Flooding in the coast, sorry. In the day we helped the CRCL, we bagged 68 sacks of oyster shells, which is the equivalent to 90 tons of oysters. The, these oyster shells will help make about 70% of a coral reef. I was also a part of the first young adult gathering for the National Gathering. Uh, this trip was an incredible experience, and I learned a lot from the speakers and lessons that were provided throughout the week. I'm very excited to see how the Young Adult Gathering will grow here in the future, especially in this next gathering in 27, where they will be going back up to Minneapolis. Uh, this summer has been a very busy, but also very fun and exciting experience, and I want to thank you all for allowing me to enter here again. Have a great week, and God bless.
Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ask. Ask as you, that you have nourished us in this meal. Now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. And now receive this blessing, the blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. I want to say before we sing our last hymn that I think that it's been wonderful this morning to have all of you so close to us. It's felt so intimate. And I've loved every minute of it. So thank you for your patience and your resilience. Let's sing together our closing hymn, Go My Children With My Blessing. Thank you. 